I'd like to welcome uh, everyone who's attending live um, and uh, anybody who uh, tunes in afterwards for the recording. Uh, my name is Dermot Bagnali, or Mackerski as my uh, mapping username. Um, and this is kind of a, a retrospective kickoff to OpenStreetMap Ireland's um, activities through the month of November, um, where every day we have a, a, a different mapping topic. Uh, today, it's the uh, small town of Port Ballantrae near the Giants Causeway in County Antrim. Um, and today, um, uh, as part of the kickoff, um, we've a, a special guest with us. We're joined by Alan Mustard, who's the current chair of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, uh, joining us from um, the other side of the Atlantic. Um, so, Alan, uh, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be part of this. It's been a busy few days for you, Alan. Do you want to give a quick summary of, of what you've been up to for the past week or so? Well, actually, for the past two weeks, I've been out in the state of Iowa, which we, we believe to be a battleground state, um, campaigning for Joe Biden. So uh, I did what is called ballot chasing, uh, going to people who had requested a, an absentee ballot but had not yet returned it, uh, trying to collect those ballots and get them back to the County Registrar of Elections. Then uh, for three days towards the tail end, I was a poll watcher in the County Auditor's Office of Dallas County, Iowa, uh, watching them tabulate the ballots. And that was uh, a fascinating experience that really uh, instilled in me a very deep faith in how how good our, our elections are, how, how sound they are, and, and how fair and free they are. Excellent. Um, so after an ordeal like that, it's good to get back to mapping. And actually, it's um, a kind of an accidental segue into um, what we're doing today, because um, really, it's true of our November initiative, um, uh, as well as the a lot of the other stuff that we've been doing as part of OpenStreetMap Ireland for the past year. We're really trying to get all of the um, buildings in the island of Ireland mapped. Um, and every day we're taking a different theme. Now, there's actually a Joe Biden related theme um, that has uh, cropped up because li like many um, U.S. presidents, um, he's playing up his Irish roots a lot, uh, which lie in the town of Ballina in County Mayo in, in the northwest of Ireland. Um, so in a few moments, we're going to try and do a little bit of mapping. Um, Alan has agreed to be a good sport and to, to do some mapping in the uh, town of Ballina uh, in the street where Joe Biden's roots lie. Um, one of the things that, that's probably worth pointing out in that regard um, is that um, I, I think a couple of days ago, I noticed that um, a, a modern relative of Joe Biden, a cousin of some sort, in, goes by the name of Joe Blewett, um, which when I read the, the news article about that, I, I had to look twice to convince myself that it wasn't just some kind of gag, because at that stage, the Results of the election were not yet clear, um, but um, an ancestor um, of uh, of Joe Blewett, whose first name uh, escapes me for the moment, uh, actually was a surveyor for the Ordnance Survey, the original Ordnance Survey of Ireland, um, which is which is a particularly um, uh, interesting and novel coincidence, I suppose, from the point of view of of mappers. So, um, just what we're it it was Garden Street in Ballina. Um, that that we identified as as having relevance. So so, Alan, I don't know. Are you ready to share your screen and uh, maybe ha ha map a building or two? Sure. Let me bring this back up again. There we go. Can you all see that? Can you all see the map? I can't yet, but let's wait a few moments. Um, oh, it should. I didn't Should. see it earlier, but but Tad, I think you did. Can you can, can somebody on the line confirm? Yes, yes, yes. Folk, folk can see it. So I would say so, I'll, I'll, I've seen it before. So so I would say carry on mapping. You can you can do your own commentary. All right. Well, did we ever find out what the building number was for the fire station? We didn't. That's not an easy thing to find out. While you're mapping, I'm going to go. I'll I'll see if I can find a reference to uh, to, to the fire station. Because we found that fire station there, and I thought, well, it would be interesting that I, as a as an old uh, retired uh, firefighter, it might be kind of fun to uh, add that. 
Yeah, we definitely need to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up now. Yeah, let's try this again. Come on. I'm working with my laptop, which I don't normally map with. And I'm using an unfamiliar mouse, and so this is not working as well as I might like. As a JOSM user, I find I definitely need a mouse with a wheel. I know ID is a little bit different there. This is a rather odd shaped building, I have to say. But they all appear to be quite contiguous. Yeah, I think it's going to need some ground truth to to, to split those out. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry about it for now. If we can get the continuum right, then uh, then we can deal with that later. All right, and let's see. So this is a building, and we don't know exactly what it is, but it's got a whole bunch of points in here where you've got shops and whatnot. So it appears to be some sort of a commercial building. Yeah, yeah, that would be a commercial street. All right, so let's make this a... Uh, commercial building. There we go. And it is on Garden Street. You see, this is exactly what we like in mapping, because one of the themes that we, we often discuss in the community is the fact that, um, especially when it comes to remote mapping, um, it's not always clear what kind of building that you're dealing with, but sometimes it is. Sometimes, especially in residential areas, you can tell if something is a residential building, or in, in many cases, you can even say it's a house. And it's one of the things we certainly try to encourage in the community while we're doing these mapping exercises, that if we can, uh, to, to categorize it. So quite without prompting you've you've, you've very much um, mapped in the way that we like well one of the things that uh, i learned in turkmenistan is that after you had mapped enough schools and kindergartens you could tell them apart uh, and i became rather adept at that as well of uh, figuring out what was a what was a kindergarten versus what was what was a school and the defining characteristic of the uh, kindergarten was that it had play sheds outside, whereas the schools all had uh, a track and field operation. So if there was a running track and a soccer field, it was a high school or a middle school. Yeah, nice little indicator. So you, you had some kind of giveaways. That was in the modern schools. Things had been built in the last 10 or 15 years. Anything older than that, it was basically indistinguishable from other public buildings they were just rectangles usually so you couldn't really tell yeah i mean since you since you brought it up um and it's it's actually one of the things before we got this nice um president elect gimmick that we're doing here um my thought was to just have you tell your origin of mapping uh, origin of story as a mapper um might be just worthwhile a lot of us on the call know this i know but just might be interesting to to, to, to speak it into the record for those who, who haven't heard it yet? Oh, well, um, I got into mapping simply because I was tired of getting lost. And if, if you really want to get the full uh, half-hour presentation on that, uh, go to YouTube and search on I'm Tired of Getting Lost. Um, and you can get the presentation I gave to the North American Cartographic Information Society uh, uh, a year ago. It was a year ago this month. But basically, uh, there were no decent maps in, in Turkmenistan. And uh, one of the things you, you're supposed to do as a diplomat is you're supposed to uh, explore the country uh, of assignment. I can't quite figure out what's going on here with this building. Something's weird here. So we're going to need some ground truth on this. There's some sort of a little structure down here, and I can't quite make out what it is from the from the photograph. But anyway, so I uh, uh, I started mapping the city of Ashgabat, the uh, capital city, 
basically uh, so that I could find my way around because uh, the, the, the city is in the Guinness Book of World Records for the highest concentration of white marble-faced buildings in the world. And as a result of that, uh, and the fact that there were very few street signs, uh, it was practically impossible to uh, to find your way around unless you had lived there for years and years and years and kind of automatically knew your way around. So as a result, I started mapping. My wife helped me. Uh, we would drive around on evenings and weekends. We would collect street names. If we saw a street street name, uh, a street sign on a building, we would we would add that. I had a Garmin Nuvi uh, navigator that I was using to collect the data, and then we would upload it all, and and we would then uh, go, you know, make make progress every every weekend and every evening when we were out doing this. And over the course of the first several months, we basically got most of the streets in Ashgabat mapped. Um, I was also traveling to other major cities uh, in the country. Uh, I did my my mapping there. I would collect street names, add them, and then. As we collected buildings, uh, we would we would put in the public buildings, hotels, and things like that. Uh, that was all very useful, and and I knew I'd kind of won when the drivers in the motor pool who were scoffing at me and telling me that that uh, they thought this was kind of a waste of time because they knew their way around, they were born and raised there, and so on. Uh, when they actually started using the map and they started using the GPS navigators uh, to to get around the country. So that was uh, that's kind of how it started, and uh, uh, pretty much mapped the country, uh, got the base map down. There's still a lot of work to be done, but then I also gave some training courses, uh, master classes in the uh, in our American space, and as a result, there are uh, there's a, there, it's a very small numbers because there's no civil society in Turkmenistan, and if we had created a a uh, an open street map local community it probably would have sent a bunch of people to jail since uh, in in theory um, cartography is 100 percent the province of the the military uh, but um, there are some local mappers they are anonymous they do contribute things uh, most of them use maps with me to add things and um so the, the map just keeps getting richer and richer and richer. And I go in and do a little cleanup once in a while because some of them do some very strange things. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing these days with the, the Turkmenistan map is just doing doing cleanup from time to time and adding things as, as I come across them. Well, one thing uh, that, that's still outstanding is uh, – uh, I have managed to identify and geolocate all cities uh, because uh, the Turkmen have a law that defines what is a city, what is a town, and what is a village. So we have finally got, gotten all of the cities in. We're still lacking four towns. We know roughly where they are, but we don't know which of the populated areas uh, in the uh, aerial imagery is, is actually that town. So there are four of them that I'm still waiting to try to find out. Uh, where those towns are, and we only have mapped about um, a third of the villages uh, in terms of knowing what their names are. There are lots of populated areas that we just don't know what the name is of, of that municipality, and uh, that's something that I'm, I'm not sure will ever be completed uh, since I'm not there anymore. Actually, that was a question I was going to ask. Have successive ambassadors in any way embraced that work or continued it or at, le at the very least benefited from it? Well, they benefited from it, certainly, and they, the officers of the embassy who are there now have benefited from it to the degree that they're allowed to travel under under the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, so the travel travel is very restricted there right now because of COVID-19. Uh, but no, the, uh, the the officers who are there now are, uh, are, are pretty much preoccupied just trying to keep the embassy operating uh, under conditions of the pandemic and they're not going out and exploring and, and doing this kind of mapping. Understandable. Um, just in terms of today's mapping effort, um, uh, now I haven't been, I've been preparing for this this morning and um, I haven't touched Port Ballantrae at all. Uh, does anyone have a, a report on that? Has, any, has anyone been looking at that mapping e effort so far? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, this is uh, the big C here, Kieran. Uh, you know me as Kieran Staunton uh, on Twitter. Um, yeah, the uh, pork voluntary is doing well. It's uh, pretty mostly, uh, pretty much mostly done. I'll just give you some stats on it now, uh, Dermot, if you want to see those. Uh, it looks yeah, like sure, we have sure. 80, 80, 95% mapped and 84% validated. So the validation, like like what uh, Alan was saying about uh, uh, vote counting, the validation has to follow soon after the the original work of mapping. So uh, yeah, so it's pretty. It's going to be done by uh, probably next hour or two, and then we'll move on to another. We we'll probably move on ahead of schedule to another town or county. Excellent. Um, Port Ballantrae, for anyone on the call who isn't familiar with it, is very, very close to the Giant's Causeway, uh, which is a, a beautiful, um, I can't even say historical location, geological location. It's even older than that um, um, on the North Antrim coast um, uh, within sight of Scotland. Um, and um, yeah, one of, one of my favourite places. So um, I, I was pleased to, pleased to see the effort there. Um, and actually... Um, another small piece of news is not news yet, but it, it was an interesting opportunity uh, to show the power of OpenStreetMap. Uh, earlier today, I, I noticed a tweet from a, a journalist uh, who was retweeting uh, a tweet from a, a local of uh, Green Island, um, which is just north of Belfast. Um, uh, um, along the coast, basically talking about a, a secret beach, which while all beaches are by law accessible to the or open to the public, let's say, this one wasn't accessible to the public, but there is a, a private road um, in the possession of a public utility, it, it would appear, with a locked gate on it. So there's a, a, a campaign going on to have that opened, which is something I hadn't known about. So um, with a little, a video had been posted and I was able to determine where this beach was. So I put it on the map uh, and tweeted back to the person doing it. I said, is, is this the place? And maybe it'll help that it's on the map. Um, so I suppose a, a small exercise in, in potentially helping people to, to democratize um, uh, a feature just by making sure that it can be seen on a map. So let, let's see how that one goes. So, Kieran, um, since your mic has been open, uh, do you want to just talk through some of the um, the other recent uh, um, um, uh, locations that we've had uh, mapping done, or talk up some of the the ones that were due to move on to? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we've got a bunch of them. Really, uh, we're going to uh, try and finish off uh, tasks that have been open and uh, for quite a number of months. And uh, we've noticed that uh, when we make a coherent effort and we all map together and we kind of just have one or two tasks open and everyone hops in, we seem to, uh, greater than the sum of the parts, I guess, uh, we seem to uh, map exponentially faster or, or stay longer mapping. I don't know, maybe it's the, the warmth of the crowd, if there's, a, if there's such a concept. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're flying along there. So we've had a, a lot of uh, really good uh, mapping days. Uh, certainly uh, yesterday, uh, Mayo got validated, which would be the further west part of Mayo from where the Biden ancestral home is. Uh, so Mayo got validated. Uh, we were working on towns in uh, County Leash down in the Midlands. Uh, yeah, so I won't name call on all of them, but we are going to be visiting quite a number of destinations down till November 30th. And uh, as Dermot knows, uh, we're really trying very hard to give the folks who have to stay home a little bit more because of our level five lockdown uh, something extra to do. So uh, hopefully that helps you out there. Yeah, for sure. Um... A, a, a shout out coming in uh, around the fact that Nina is still not finished. Um, I'm going to pick up on that because although he's not on the call, uh, a good friend of mine, Ken, um, is a is a local mapper from there. Uh, so I'm um, just just putting that out there. Um, let, let, let's see how that one goes. Um, the um, 
it's also at this time of year one of the topics that's coming up is the around the open street map foundation um and the the the, the issue of of new board members um and actually we've in addition to alan uh we, we also have uh, rory mccann on the call uh, from the open street map foundation board um e- either of you want to um just uh, address how that's been going rory you want to go ahead yeah, so, um, yeah, hello. Um, um, firstly, I think, Alan, I'm pretty sure those are two houses. That's probably semi-detached houses. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've had the, the AGM uh, annual general meeting will be in December, in, in 15th or so. Um, there is three of the seven board seats are up for re-election. Uh, both myself and Alan are, are not up for re-election. Um, so we, we won't get rid of us yet. Uh, we had, it was actually, I think yesterday, the um, the nomination period closed, so um, unfortunately you, you can't stand as a candidate uh, anymore, but we have, I think, uh, double check, I think about six uh, or so seats, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candidates, um, including one of, one of the um, members who is standing down is, is running for re-election, uh, and, then, and then six uh, others. Um, and there will also be some votes on sort of articles of association changes uh, to to the foundation, and and some uh, tweaks about um, like fees and 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 such, um, which there will be more sort of formal and, and communication in from the the, the board and, and within the the wider uh, uh uh, membership as well that that that, that will kind of be be going on um yeah i suppose it, it's going well and, and just for the record also uh Dermot used to be on the foundation as well so uh, he probably knows a little as well but a few years ago um sure it's been a while it's been a while now i remember it i remember it vividly but um but but but, but it must have been a while back now It's it's worth just po- uh, pointing out because it's it's not you know uh, we, we throw these terms around but for anyone who, who's not familiar the the Open Street Map Foundation essentially exists to provide a, a kind of a, a a coordination of the things that in a project like this you need like servers and the fact that certain of the things that happens within the project cost money uh, and do need planning and so on um, and OpenStreetMap Ireland uh, as an organization has an affiliation to the OpenStreetMap Foundation as a local chapter so that's that's how all those pieces fit together um, and I know there's been a, um, a a recent uptick in activity in terms of getting local chapters from uh, a whole bunch of countries and territories which is uh, nice nice to see. Yeah, um, the um, the foundation quote uh, supports but does not control the OpenStreetMap project, um, and a lot of it's a little sort of it's 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 also slightly vague. What, what's the OpenStreetMap project? What's the OpenStreetMap community? Uh, you know who's what, what's going on, um, and there is sometimes a bit of um, multiple opinions about um, you know should it be a big OSMF or should the OSMF only should be tiny. Um, but I mean, legally, somebody needs to own the trademarks. Legally, somebody needs to own the OpenStreetMap.org domain name and, and that kind of thing. And that is, um, there needs to be some entity, legal entity doing that. And, and there's a minimum the foundation is that. Um, and yeah, the, the, we have local chapters um, with a new process. And uh, OpenStreetMap Ireland is, uh, as of, ooh, I think it was two months ago, a uh, approved local chapter. And the board has weekly board meetings, and the, there will be a presentation from OpenStreetMap Ireland. You guys are on the hook uh, in a few weeks. Um, at that board meeting, we, we this year have had um, um, local chapters from around the world giving, giving presentations, and, um, and yeah, we are we are trying to improve the um, the uh, the number of local chapters around the world and in general, and uh, that's part of the um, the work the board does. Um, you know, uh, analyzing applications and, and feedback and such. Um, so yeah, and the board though is is sort of doing new things as well. Slightly uh, getting a bit larger in terms of like hiring um, a staff, two staff, extra staff, and and things like that. Um, which is is one way that the board and hence the foundation can support. I'd just like to, if I, if I may, just offer a, a, a couple of additional points to what Rory said. Um, uh, 
Rory hit the nail on the head saying that the, the board and the foundation support but don't control the project. And this has created um, a, 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 a very sharp line. There's a red line that, that, that the board is very reluctant to cross, which is we, we, are, we are inclined to go out and raise funds to support activities or, or projects that create tools for the community. Uh, so, for an ex example, uh, we're now paying uh, the full salary of uh, the ID developer, uh, Quincy Morgan. Uh, that had been paid by Critigen up until uh, fairly recently, but when Critigen decided it no longer wanted to pay for that, uh, essentially Quincy was given his walking papers. And we, we saw both a threat and an opportunity. The threat was that we would lose Quincy to somebody else and we would lose him from the project. Uh, the opportunity was that uh, the foundation could take um, essentially control of, of the project, of, of the ID project, um, and then relegate that control to the community, uh, more or less wash its hands of, of how actually ID would be developed, turn it over to the community to let the community actually control a development of the ID editor, and, and yet we would fund it. And this, I think, encapsulates the attitude of the board that we're happy to go out and raise money uh, and then use that money to for for activities and projects uh, that that support the project and allow mappers to map. But we are not inclined to exert control over that because the control really belongs with the community, since this is a community project. Um, the other thing that we are going to be spending money on is we do intend to hire a full-time systems administrator because the the amount of the sheer demand for data, and I've gotten conflicting stories from different people in the operations working group. Uh, some have told me that certain parts of, of, uh, of the project, uh, demand has gone up 50% per year, year on year. Others have told me no, only 20% year on year. Uh, certain types of data are uh, in greater demand, up to 30% year on year. So I, I can't give you a specific number, but you take any of those numbers and you're talking about phenomenal growth in demand for the, for the OSM data. And at the same time, uh, I was being attacked on Twitter for not doing enough to make sure that the servers were operating fast, that we had sufficient bandwidth, the people complaining about slow loading of tiles and whatnot. The board looked at this and said, there have to be some solutions out there, but they're going to cost money. Are we willing to uh, raise the funds and, and simply uh, pay for better infrastructure uh, where it's needed? And uh, the short answer was yes, the board was willing to do that. And again, this is an activity that supports the project, you know, providing hardware. Uh, getting improved software, hiring a systems administrator who can actually spend full time devoted to uh, keeping the system optimized. Uh, but at the same time, the OSM Foundation board is not telling anybody how to map, what to put into the database, how to use the data. Uh, we're simply supporting the project. So I, I hope that that's absolutely clear to everybody that this remains a community project, uh, but the board is taking actions to make sure that the technology will be there when people want it and need it, and that uh, the platform will be stable and reliable. Sure, yeah, no, that I think that those are all very wet, wise words, and I guess I would add one thing uh, to it as well because. Um, when all is said and done, um, the board and the members of the working groups of the OpenStreetMap Foundation uh, ultimately are made up of mappers themselves. And um, so you have this duality, um, of course, in the same way that any other group of mappers can get together and say, hey, let's do this thing that we think is good for the project and no one can stop them. The same is also true uh, of the board, although, again, um, and, and I know from my own prior experience, um, you do make sure not to put yourself out there, I suppose, not to use your prominence uh, or not to misuse your prominence in order to prevail um, in your own particular view of how things should be mapped. Um, but that said, um, we're all mappers and uh, the consensus that, that, that we have within the, the project in terms of how to get things done st still applies, um, e e e even when some of it is more organized than, than, than the rest of it. Um, 
we we're up at around about a half an hour. It's probably um, probably we don't want to run super long on this one. Um, the um, I'm looking here. Yes, Kieran, you've made a, an interesting point uh, about the micro grants, and it might be just worth saying a few words on, on that one. Um, I think Rory, when you mentioned that um, that 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 we we uh, we might as um, uh, actually uh, speak be. Uh, 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 in a, an OSMF forum, probably it'll be on this subject, but maybe maybe it's worth having a quick preview, a sneak preview of, of that while we're here. So just about the micro grants then, uh, I don't know where the seed really got planted, Alan. Uh, that was that was really Yost. That was uh, Yost Shupe, actually. That was his that was his idea. So that was a very good uh, development. That was a lot of support. That was a lot of good support for us um, because we were able to just invest in those little things, which even though they sound like they're silly in their cost, uh, it isn't really fair that somebody puts their hand in their pocket to do that because there's a lot of people already given a lot of time to the project, which which is the real value. The real value of the project is the the time that people invest in it. But those extra little things like uh, banners and uh, flyers and stickers and little promotional things that both reward the past behavior, uh, past uh, commitment, uh, but also, you know, become like a draw or like a promotional for new people coming on board because we constantly need to have new people joining us and engaging and bringing new thoughts to it. And uh, the thing I like to observe, and I don't know if anybody shares this with me, but um, I really love to see uh, younger people uh, joining in and starting to map because I think, and, and sometimes younger people who are brilliant people, um, you know, maybe academically, they bring an insight into something and they say, well, look, why don't, why doesn't this work this way? And why doesn't it work mm -hmm. that way? And those are kind of disruptive. Although I think, Alan, you, you would accept that there's been enough disruption in the world for the last few years but <laughs> this, yeah disruption can be a good thing you know you can come yeah. out of disruption but I, I i think in america we're ready for some boredom about now <laughs> well okay so uh my point is more uh just in in technical terms really and yeah. just why don't things work like this and why isn't there this and why isn't there that and i've had enough i've gone into schools i, I shared some time in schools with uh, dermot uh, we had some fun in a school in Port Mar uh, one day where the kids wanted to map for 24 hours. And that sounds crazy, but we uh, we did do it. So I don't know what I looked like, Dermot, at 6 a.m., but uh, I'm sure I wasn't as, as pretty as I am now. So. Well, the, 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 well, I don't know. We didn't have a lockdown then, so um, I think I think a lot of us have let ourselves go. There's the, uh, uh, I'm not on video because my link didn't work, but in many ways that's probably a good thing. Um, there, there is one funny story to tell about that day in Port Marnock, Kieran. I don't know if you still remember. <clears throat> uh, around about four o'clock in the afternoon, um, when everybody, we literally had, how, how many of the students, uh, Kieran, did we have mapping? About 120. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were literally, I was touring around different classrooms because they wouldn't all fit in a single one. Um, and then at some point, um, people began to, 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 to anxiously say that they couldn't upload their changes. And it turned out they were getting API messages to say that they had exceeded the, the abuse limits of, of the API because everybody's edits were coming in from the same IP address. Um, so I, I had to frantically track, track down Tom Hughes, um, um, who I knew would be in a position to actually do something about it. And, you know, to, to his great credit, uh, once he heard what we were doing, he, 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 within, I think, 15 minutes, um, uh, we'd been whitelisted in some way and we were able to proceed. But uh, these are the things you, you don't often think about, even for mapping parties themselves. I mean, there are protocols and have been protocols for mapping parties. I think we hadn't we kind of had forgotten. <laughs> um, I, I think, Kieran, um, it was my first time being involved in a, in a party quite that large. Every previous Irish mapping party hadn't had the scale to ever need to do that. So um, th there is that naivety, but, but, uh, but, but, but we hit the limit. We hit it, we hit it hard. Yeah, we sure did. And they repeated that day uh, on another occasion when they were better at mapping and there was uh, maybe... Uh, 20, 30 of them had graduated on to Jossum, 
and uh, they did a million nodes in a night. Now, look, not all nodes are created equal, but, uh, you know, there's a few kind of bad things done, but really, uh, that was incredible. It's an incredible side story to, to the project because uh, I think uh, uh, it was a, that, that was an enormous concentrated edition of nodes and it was Lesotho, uh, as I remember, it was um, we were adding it to uh, one spot in Africa, which is a small enough country to receive all those new nodes. But uh, given that it has uh, only 21 million nodes in it, uh, <laughs> it's kind of it was a significant enough day. But yeah. So uh, really then, Alan, I guess the, the point I'd made was about the micro grants. And what I really wanted to do is to thank you for making that work for us and make that happen. Obviously we had to apply ourselves and we had to pass the minimum level of uh, sanity that must have had to be uh, tested in all of the applications. So we were very glad to have that and thank you for it. Well, I, I, would, I would ask that you, uh... Uh, you go back and and you uh, thank you uh, Yost because it was really it was Yost's initiative and he was the one who who got the board to to adopt that it was actually the micro grant program was approved before I joined the board I think it was in the November meeting of last year that uh, is that right Rory isn't that when uh, micro grants came in yeah it's been November. kicking around a little while um, I believe Hot had done micro has done micro grants for a few years so some of the inspiration mm -hmm. came from that but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think if the, within the OSMF uh, board it, that's been kicking around a little while. I'm always happy to take credit for other people's work, but uh, since I'm no longer an ambassador, I can't legally do that. So. <laughs> I was going to say the other thanks really do go to our micro grants committee, uh, which used was on it, but um, but there was about a half dozen other people, and they uh, they did a lot of the, um, the 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 vital but boring work of just sifting through a lot of the applications. So yeah. That was absolutely incredible, and, and the, the, the micro grant committee did absolutely yeoman's work on that. And uh, and again, uh, one one comment I'd like to make: uh, micro grants is just one aspect of, of of what the board is trying to do. Because uh, when when I came on the board, uh, of course, I I came onto the board as someone who had never been involved in OSM governance before. Uh, I'd done some mapping. Um, which I guess gave me some street credibility, but uh, had never been involved in a working group. I had never been involved in, in any sort of the, the governance activities. So it was all very brand new. And I did what I've always done. Anytime I got a new job, uh, I have uh, in, in previous jobs when I worked for Uncle Sam, I would just bring in my direct reports and start with them and say, okay, what do I need to know to be successful? What are the issues that we face? What are the problems? And uh, you find out very quickly that, that there are people who, who have a very good grasp of what the problems are, what the issues are, and who are very frustrated that they're not being addressed. And it, when you have several people telling you the same thing, you start to take notice that, yeah, this is an issue and it needs to be addressed. And so I did basically the same thing, except, of course, since it's a global community, um, I was doing it by, by telephone, by video conference. We had a video conference, as you may recall, you were one of the first. Uh, that I reached out to and who, who who came back to me and said, yes, we'd love to talk to you. And a lot of what the board's done in the last uh, 11 months is rooted in the feedback from the community about what the community thinks uh, the board should be doing. So the, the micro grants, of course, were already underway. But in the wake of the micro grant program, we've been coming up with the other things, the, the big things like a systems administrator, like hiring uh, Quincy Morgan full-time to work full-time on, on ID, which of course is uh, a very important editor if we're going to attract new mappers because it is the easiest, uh, it, by far it is the easiest uh, editor to use in terms of actually uh, doing something besides putting nodes on the map. Uh, and then uh, uh, the other thing is is we've gone out and we've given some grants uh, that are not micro grants, but we've given some grants to people to do upgrades of Nomenatum, for example. Uh, Sarah Hoffman uh, is working on on an upgrade of Nomenatum the, based on funding that we provided. Richard Fairhurst is rewriting Potlatch so that it no longer needs to rely on Flash. 
And, and that's, we did, did that because Potlatch remains an important editor to a certain segment of the community. And there were parts of the community that said this would be a good idea. We'd like to see this. So again, uh, the board is really interested in providing tools to the community that will allow the community to map. And, and again, uh, my, my, my request to you guys, uh, as usual, is uh, tell us what you think. Uh, tell us what we're missing. Tell us what, what we need to focus on aside from what we're already doing. Yeah, can I just, just chime in as well there with them, um, just to echo Alan and, you know, um, Kieran was saying about the little costs for, for some things. I have done some, um, I, I printed out and got some stickers and I paid for it in my own pocket. And then I was able to claim it from the foundation as an expense. Um, I'm also on the communications working group. So just. I mean, in case you don't know or anyone, feel free to pass it on. Like, if, if you have ideas for even little things, you say, I want 50 quid to do such and such, please just, I mean, talk to us, ask us. Maybe we can help you out because you're right. You know, we, we, we should, we, we need to support the community in general for everything. So, And, and I'd, I'd like to point out that, that there's far more money out there uh, than we realized because um, there, there was a huge debate within the board uh, for, for quite a while about whether we should do this. Should we remain a shoestring operation with a budget of 120,000 pounds per year? Or should we uh, start going out and, and raising money from the corporations? Uh, and of course, the, the, the great fear was that once we did that, the, the, the corporations would have leverage over us and would be able to tell us what to do. And I concluded in conversations with a lot of people that the, the likelihood of that happening was very small. Uh, the corporations really, uh, I can't say they're afraid of open street map community, but um, they are very cautious, let's say, in their interactions with the community because they understand just how defensive the community is about what it has accomplished by creating open street map. So the, the corporations have made it clear to me, they really don't want to deal with the community. They want to deal with the board and they don't want to run the board because they realize what a can of worms that would open up. And to them, the, the interesting thing is, uh, is the data. They want access to the data and they want the data to be good. They want the data to be as high quality as possible. So I think we as the board have recognized that. And we're willing to take the very, very small risk of, of an effort to, to try to control us by taking their money, accepting their money, and making it clear to the corporations, uh, if you should try to exert authority over us, we will reject your money and we will go back to being a shoestring operation with all that that entails, uh, including um, you know less reliability of the platform, less stability of the platform, and so on and so forth, which is not in their interests. So I think the board has struck a very happy medium of uh, being able to raise money from the corporations that uh, supports a project that's in their best interests while retaining control of the project and, and, and then handing off that control to the community. Because to be perfectly blunt, uh, I as a mapper am interested in mapping. I'm interested in continuing to work on the map of Turkmenistan in particular and trying to develop it. Uh, I am not interested in controlling how anybody else maps a country uh, in which they are working. Uh, and that's true, I think, of every other member of the board. We're, we're not interested in, in telling anybody else what to do. We are interested in giving other people all the tools that they could possibly use to, to, to do what they want to do. Rory, do you want to comment on that? Uh, no, I, I think yeah, I agree with you. Um, we are we are trying to um, just give people like support the project but not control it. Uh, I mean, for example, with ID, um, I don't know. We're, we're we're giving them money, and it's it's basically like you know we Quincy, we know you, we you know you're good at what you're doing, and you know just keep keep doing what you're doing. He he is doing like ID. I think every two weeks a project meeting, and I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been to any of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, we have a we have a bigger. I'm going to say we use the, the the words bigger, smaller, but bigger project than we had before. Uh, and I think as much as people may 
may have opinions about how big they want the foundation to be. I, I think every no one's going to quibble with a bigger project and, and more mapping going on. Which is well, which actually, is uh, we've had we've had quite a bit of quibbling about uh, the fundraising, and um, uh, there there has a has, there's been quite a bit of quibbling um, in in various communications channels about that. But I think I think the board realizes that uh, the project has reached a size where. It, it does need more financial support. And I think the other thing uh, that the board has done, we haven't talked about this, but in the last two, in the last three board meetings, I guess, I missed the last board meeting because I was in Iowa campaigning. But in the two uh, meetings prior to that, uh, we saw for the first time uh, local chapters admitted who are not in Europe. Uh, we now have uh, a local chapter in uh uh, Oceania, uh, which is our first Asian uh, chapter. We have, uh, uh, I've forgotten the name of the NGO down in Argentina, but we have the OSM chapter in Argentina now. And then, of course, OSM United States uh, has finally joined. So, and, and these have paved the way for a lot of others. Uh, OSM US held off because of a trademark issue. We resolved that with them. Uh, and uh, that, that's going to pave the way for OSM Japan to apply. And I, I've been in a dialogue with OSM Japan, urging them to, to apply for local chapter status too. And the whole idea is that if we want to have a map of the world, uh, then we need to have local chapters around the world that help promote this and, and spread the word and, and recruit local mappers. So I really see the local chapters as critical uh, to this effort. And that's one of the reasons that this board has taken very, very seriously the need to establish local chapters to help the local communities organize. And uh, again, I would love to hear your thoughts again, um, how we can do this better, how we can get more local chapters in. And we've, we've talked about this in the past, but I think it, uh, we're, we're coming to a point where when a new board comes in in January, we should renew that dialogue and and figure out how to move forward. Sure. No, I, th I think I think we'd be we'd be pleased to participate in that. Um, so I think at this point um, I'll, I'll I'll pause briefly in case there are any questions that haven't arisen, which uh, folks are, can feel free to submit by chat if they wish to. And I um, and I and I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to sign off fairly soon because I have to go get my COVID test. Yes, of course. Uh, we're, we're, we're all, we're all going to wish you the best with with that. So, um, yeah, no, I, I see no questions coming in. So, I think probably it's a good a good moment to 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 to, to thank uh, you, Alan, for uh, for getting up earlier than than the rest of us had to uh, on uh, on a Sunday, um, on a day when otherwise you've earned your peace and quiet. Um, but it's it's been great to have you with us. Great to have you map a piece of Ballina. If you should, if you should ever happen to have words with the president elect, you can uh, you, you you can tell him what you did um, in, in 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 his ancestral home. I'm sure he'd be very pleased. I'll tweet that out uh, and uh, let people know I did that. Maybe the word will get back to him. We'll have sure. to get uh, Joe Biden mapping now. That would be quite a quite a nice one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we'll on the state visit whenever, um, whenever, whenever such things are hap can happen again, we'll 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 have to pull a stunt, maybe have a, a mapping flash mob. Let's let's see what we can absolutely. do. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Ellen. Thanks everybody for for showing up. Um, and um, we can uh, we we can draw a, a line under it there. So 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 so, so thanks everybody.